And today we're going to be going over the trick or treat. <laughs> going over the new, new uh, champions, Halloween champions. We've got three more added on top of Harvest Jack. So we have uh, four in, in total for Halloween. So we have uh, Brackus the Shifter. He's going to be a legendary for the Skinwalker. So finally, uh, Skinwalker is going to get some love from Plarium. Again, Harvest Jackie is the fusion that's going on right now in the fusion event. Um, Madame Ceres, she's the witch. And Miscreated Monster, he is the Frankenstein champion. So let's go over Skinwalker's guy first. So Brackus the Shifter, he looks pretty cool. So the art team did a pretty good job creating him. And he's not a reskin, so that's good. <laughs> so his verse ability is Innocent Bloody. Attacks one enemy, heals himself by 15% of the damage inflicted. So right off the bat, this guy, is an, he's an attack type, and he can heal himself. So right off the bat, you don't need any lifesteal uh, gear on him. I think if you put lifesteal on him, he's going to be healing for much more, but I don't think... I think that's uh, too overkill, so there's no point in doing that. Full Moon Rampage. Attacks one enemy six times, so he's got a six hit ability. That's crazy. And then if he maxes out, it's going to be a three turn cooldown, so every three turns you can hit an enemy six times. And he heals by 25% of the damage inflicted. And then he heals by 50% of the damage inflicted instead if the target is under a fear or a true fear debuff. Um, after the first hit, he has a 75% chance of placing a 25% weakened debuff for 3 turns. Damage based on attack. So this guy looks very good. Honestly, looks good for clan boss, for sure. And he has an ability. Hunter's Howl places a 50% increased attack buff on all allies for 3 turns. And then he attacks with an enemy 3 times. So triple hit, 6 hit, and a single hit. So this guy, this guy actually might be better off with uh, Giant Slayer. His cooldowns are relatively short, so I think he might be better off with Giant Slayer. Uh, each has a 50% chance of placing a true fear debuff for one turn, and he has a 50% chance of placing a fear debuff for on two random enemies for one turn if the true fear debuff is placed. And that's a four turn cooldown when maxed out in his passive ability, Beast Mode. Uh, that's a pretty cool name for passive ability. So his damage increases by 40% when this champion HP drops below 40%. Um, I don't think this will happen often because um, he's constantly recovering health. He has an active effect. So he revives himself by, with 20% HP when he gets killed and then he immediately grants an extra turn. So I guess this is where this would come into effect, this passive effect with his active effect. So when he has a little bit of HP left, when he is revived, immediately grants himself an extra turn. So he's going to be dealing 40% more damage at that point. So that is actually crazy. And if you max this out, it's going to be a 5 turn cooldown. So if this guy can survive uh, for five turns, every time he's going to be having uh, his passive up. So it's going to be pretty crazy. So this guy is very, very good. I honestly prefer if they made him the uh, fusion instead of Harvest Jack. All right, let's keep going. So Undead Horde's got Harvest Jack. Dark Elves got a new champion. We got the Witch. We got Madame Ceres. She's a Void champion. She's an Epic. And she's a support. And yeah, pretty cool if you ask me. So her A1 ability, Panic Spread. She attacks one, one enemy. And then she has a 20% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn. The chance increases to 30% of the target under one debuff. And the chance increases to 45% of the target under two or more debuffs. So this is pretty meh for me right now. But fear could potentially be good. Uh, tricks and Treats. Her A2 attacks all enemies. And she has a 40% chance of stealing one random buff from each target. So that is very good because she steals it. She doesn't just um, get rid of it or take it away. She steals it. And this is what makes this ability really good. She places the block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns if any buff is stolen this could potentially be better if if it didn't have a condition if it if it didn't have this condition where if any buff is stolen then this ability would be much better because she will always place block debuffs and why not she is an epic champion she's a void champion so she should have that ability um and then she plays a true fear debuff for one turn enemies who have buffs stolen and this is on a three turn cooldown when maxed out so here we have another ability midnight ritual removes all buffs from enemies so she doesn't steal she just removes them and then she places a 50% decrease attack debuff and 60% decrease defense debuff on all enemies for 3 turns. So this ability right here is very good for nuking for arena. And that is on a 4 turn cooldown when maxed out. Passive ability places a shield buff on herself uh, equal to 10% of her max HP at the start of each turn. When attacked while under a shield, she has a 35% chance of placing a fear debuff on the attacker for 1 turn. So overall she is pretty solid support champion. Could be better if this was not conditional on her block debuff. So she could, be, she could have been used in... Ice Golem. And let's move on to Night Revenant. So this guy is one of my favorite ones that they released. Miscreated Monsters. So this guy is basically Frankenstein. Uh, he has a cool art design. I like the, the electricity around him. 
So let's look at his ability. He's HP based um, magic affinity. And of course he's epic. So Meaty Fist, he attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 15% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. And he has a 50% chance of placing a decrease debuff debuff for one turn if the stun debuff is placed. Um, yeah, I, th I can see this being good in Arena. Lightning Storm attacks all enemies, has 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn, so he has an AoE stun. And then he plays a shield buff on all allies for three turns equal to 25% of the damage inflicted. Is his damage based on HP? Yes, it is. So this guy is very, very good on a three turn cooldown. I could potentially see this being used in Spiders then as well. If you can stun all the spiders with him. Because he also has a uh, ability called It's Alive. He places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except himself for three turns. And he heals by 50% of their max HP. Heals his champion, he heals himself by 50% of his max HP. And he plays a continuous heal buff on himself for three turns. So that can be a four turn cooldown. So I can see this guy actually being used in Spider's Den. And in Arena, especially in Arena. Plays the fear, spooky groan. Uh, plays the fear debuff on the attacker for one turn whenever an ally is attacked while under ally protection buff. So yeah, that is very good. Increase ally HP in the arena by 33%. Also viable as a leader. He has 22,965 HP. He's epic, right? Let's go look at um, Harvest Jack. How much HP does he have? So his damage is based on HP. Undead Hordes, 22,000. Okay, Harvest Jack has more HP. But that guy is epic. So yeah, overall, the new champions are, are very good. The support, the witch could have been better if they didn't make her ability conditional for the block debuffs. Because she is an epic voice, so I, I don't see a reason why they shouldn't make her better than that. Considering that the Void the void epics are generally not as good as the Ancient Shard epics in the pool. So I think that they should have made them better. Because the rares the rares in the Void are better than the ones in the Ancient. So, update on Harvest Jack. So I recently just fused, um, I forgot her name, Lady Atessa, I think that's how that's, that's her name. Um, I, got, I already had High Gatoon, I got her up, so I have two of the champions needed. Um, I have three of the rares here. I could potentially get Stitch Beast and get uh, Maiev. And for her, this is, again, Seaway Firstborn. Um, she is actually harder to get than I anticipated. If you click on the event, champion training events for a week and two days. So maybe I might be able to do it. Um, I'm at almost a thousand points, but I haven't really been grinding that much. And she's at 19,400 points to obtain her. Wow. Honestly, at this point, I think she should have been um, maybe 10,000 should be fair for her. But 19,400 is way too much. Um, we'll see if I'm able to get her. How many gems do I have? So I have 861 gems, 380 energy um, saved up. So I saved up these, saved up these. But either way, I'm not going to be spending anything to obtain her. We'll try to get her um, F2P. I think there's supposed to be a tournament for her as well. And this actually might be hard for me to get to. 1,875 points for the uh, that beast. Is it Stitch Beast or whatever? Ravage Beast? I don't know his name. Doesn't even tell you here. So at this point, I'm ranked 3. I honestly, I'd rather get the 250 energy. So going back to Miscreated Monster, I feel like they had a chance to place uh, to create some more counterattack champions. So I feel like Miscreated Monster could have had this ability, have ally protection and counterattack. Uh, I'll probably make them pretty OP, but so they can get rid of this, I guess, the healing. So I feel like they could have had another counterattack champions. I feel like they need to put more in place so people can pull some good counterattack champions. There's only three in the game. So if you had an AoE counterattack, that would be much better. I think every faction should have a champion that is capable of doing that. And then they should have a rare champion that can do a single counterattack. Um, just my two cents. So if you guys agree with that, let me know down in the comment section. And if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, make sure you guys drop a like. Helps me out a lot. And if you guys are new to the channel and you like what you see, then consider subscribing. I make um, videos almost every single day. And while you're at it, make sure you guys enable notifications so YouTube knows you want to stay up to date on all my latest content. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and pull.